In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's our month of revival. We're going to spend some time to pray in the Spirit. And we're just going to then take going to testimonies. And Maureen Kezi, I she's going to share a testimony. But we're just going to just sing that, read that scripture. Mm. To us, revive us again. One of the things that has stood out, you know, is that God is saying that it is by the Spirit. It is by the Spirit. Mm. It is by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. By the Spirit. What we are going, what is going to happen by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. By the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. By the Spirit. Hey, this is the day of the latter rain. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. Mm. I was looking for the scripture that we've been using to pray, interestingly, and I came, I've been jumping on the particular scripture, and I came here. Isaiah 86, verse 6. This is not our scripture, but um, God, won't you pay attention to this audience cry? Lord, bend down to listen to my prayers. I'm going to pray for Nigeria. I'm going to ask the Lord. You know, we've been talking about revival, 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 Niger in their nation. And, you know, it is very easy to just think that that revival is just meetings. But you see, part of the reason we ways we know that revival is really reviving, you know, for lack of a better word, in today's um, nuance, is that lives are being are changed. Not, I'm not just talking about you getting your miracles. I'm telling you that people are growing in the image of Christ, which is not just a statement or a new a new lingua, but it is seen and evident in their lives and this quality of believers. So I'm going to pray. Father, there is an urgent cry. Revive us as a nation. Stare the waters. Whatever way you want to do, God, we're here for it. Can we open our mouths and begin to pray in the name of Jesus? When your eyes are noisy, come on, we have mics and begin to pray this morning. Mando Kolubo Shataba. Revive us, revive us. Manda Kasupre Debe Shara. Father, there is an urgent cry over this nation, Lord. Revive us in the name of Jesus. I said, if, we, if where we are is on noise, please let's unmute our mics. Father, revive us. Father, revive Nigeria, oh God. Revive Africa. By your spirit, stay in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need a revival. God in the name of Jesus. Lord, revive Africa. Lord, revive Africa. In the name of Jesus. Lord, your time to save Africa is now. The third time is now, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Brother, Lord, revive us, O God. Lord, revive us, O God. Lord, revive us, O God. Lord, Africa needs to revive Oh, Lord, Africa needs to revive us. Revive us again, Jesus. 
Revive us again, Jesus name of praise. Amen. Because of our time, we'll stop here today. First, if you have testimonies, um, one of the ways, the, the testimony of Jesus' spirit of prophecy, there is, as we testify of Christ, it serves also as a prophecy for somebody else. It serves as, you know, God's goodness, you know, for somebody else. Amen. Um. Okay, so um, if you have a testimony, please raise your hand. Um. Um. Marenike, don't forget to. All right, so. Sister Gladys, please. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, PI. Um, mm -hmm. I have a testimony. God is so good. And it's so amazing that you would say that testimony of somebody else is prophecy, because that's literally what happened in my own case. Um, so at the beginning of the month, I had to go on a work trip to Ibadan and I misplaced my work phone. And when, so I'd already given up on finding it because before this happened, God was already telling me that it was okay to leave the job. And I was doubting and saying, oh God, how do I, you know, how do I feed? How do I do stuff that I'm supposed to do? And he was like, this is 2020 repeating itself. And when he said this is 2020 repeating itself, I thought it was only from the side of doubt. Um, but there was more to it because in 2022 something had happened and I had to use my salary to like pay for stuff. And so this was like, it's repeating itself. So when I had lost that phone, oh, I was so distraught. I prayed. I said, at the point, and I had to like accept that, oh, you know what? It's missing. It's fine. I'll pay for my salary. And then I'll now leave the job afterwards. Um, after I have taken the money for the payment. And I was supposed to pay, um, 70% for a new phone and I had to like contest it and say no I'm not paying 70% for a new phone because I wasn't given a new phone and the screen of the phone I was given was broken so they said because the phone was still working fine I should pay 60% and I was like okay it's it's fine it's okay um, you guys can take it from the salary at once and so last week during testimony time someone had shared a testimony about finding her mommy's phone, about praying for her mommy's phone to be found. And so subtly in my heart, because already, I've already told God, yeah, okay, they can't take the money, it's fine. It, I guess this is punishment for disobeying. And I was just, you know, it's okay. But very subtly in my heart, I was like, God, I really want this testimony too. And I remember that last week, we're supposed to like be believing God for it was a season of believing God between a period of time and then everything that you're believing God for, he would do it. And so, like I said, so softly in my heart, I just said, God, I, I, you know, I trust you that, yeah, I, I really want the same testimony for myself. Tell me why <laughs> that same day in the evening, the member, cause it's my member, um, I manage accounts. So this member had invited us for a program at their church. And so when I had first misplaced the phone, I called him and I said, ah, Mr. Tunes, I'm looking for my work phone. And he said uh, that he doesn't think I misplaced it in the church because if he was in the church, they would have alerted him to it. And then he would have, he would send it over to me. Then he calls me on Friday and he, he, uh, no Thursday it was Thursday he called me on Thursday evening after the testimony Thursday morning and then he says um that is they found your phone oh, that, so you. they, yeah so they didn't come out to tell him since because they thought it was a church member's phone 
And so they were expecting somebody to come forward and claim it. And so it was like after three weeks had passed and nobody had come to claim it. Now they said, oh, maybe it was one of the people from um, the fintech that came. So they reached out to him and said, they found a phone. Nobody has come to claim it from the church. And then it was like, yes, I had called him um, at the beginning when I misplaced it. Thank you, and Jesus. I picked the phone up uh, on, when did I leave the, yesterday was public holiday. So I picked the phone up on Tuesday and Thank it's God. fine. It's okay. Thank how God. You, how long was it? How long did it take? I mean, amen. I connect to that as well. That my phone it was, that it, it an airplane is found and I will come back. Amen. What did you say? And it was for like three weeks. So it wow. was on one missing on the it so I forgot it in the church on the sixth of April. Um but I didn't know it was missing till Monday. So six was a Saturday. I didn't know it was missing till Monday when right. I got to work and I was about to use it for work. Amen. Amen. I love it. It's amazing how God, even the things we think God can God do this, like, you know, God has a, a, an amazing way of doing great things. Amen. All right, sister, um, lady woman. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank God for adding another year. So Saturday was my birthday. Happy birthday. And, uh, it was a glorious one. Yeah, thank God. Because on my birthday, um, that was the day that we had a breakfast for the king of the programs uh, organizing my ministry in Oman. On Oman. One thing you have to know, you know, man, you can't post like social media, you can't advertise programs on social media, at least some programs, especially because the church is not even um, organized, it's not even a church, or it's not a a business or anything that was organized, that is recognized, sorry, in you know, man. And they told me that oh, we can't post Christian programs. So we didn't we couldn't post on social media. We just had to, I just had to rely on the people there to do word of mouth. God, did God come for us? And before the program, I was just really very on it. Just kept praying because some of my speech just said it wasn't just about the program we we're going for, the land being open. I know I disturbed some of the, <laughs> some people on this group and said, oh, please pray for me. And I think I told Staniki that every time I remember, I just pray. And she, she was sending messages and praying for me. <laughs> you know, but I just want to thank God. Not only did the program was, was awesome, amazing, the people that turned out. I've done this program in Abu Dhabi that I live in, and to uh, to say that the pro the turnout was higher than where EKWN is like this is where it is. This is our home, Abu Dhabi. But then going to another country and having more women being there, and one thing that we had to like do undercovers, no announcements, no and bills. And the women they were so hungry, and the way God showed up. I just want to bless God the way God showed up. It was it was amazing. Like you know, they, they were asking, "How can we be a part of this? We want to be part of this." And I'll tell them, "Just hold on, don't hold on. I'll get back to you about that." We just want to thank God for what He has started—the revival in the land and how He poured out His Spirit. That's my first testimony. So my second testimony is, you know, when I gave my life to Christ, one of the fear was that I was going to backslide, maybe because of this season then where you know you hear of when I was secondary school. Of a senior that was hot in school, and then after school, they saw this senior is no more Christian. So something that was really, I was afraid of. But I want to thank God because I tried to celebrate my born again, my spiritual birth with my birthday. This year marks 35 years mm -hmm. of being a believer. And I look back and I can say it is God. Mm -hmm. God has kept me from, you know, from glory to glory. Of course, I won't say I was faithful, hot, all true, but God has been faithful. 35 years of God keeping me, 35 years of his, of his grace, of his presence. And now, of course, I know that it's God that keeps a man from falling, but I don't live in that fear. I don't live in that fear saying that, oh, maybe I'll backslide. Maybe I can't do that. Maybe that, but God... That's kept me. So that's my test. And I also encourage everyone. I know some, some people might be feeling like um it just came to me to encourage people. I know there was a time I was saying to pray for people that are over 40. 
I know sometimes you feel, oh, maybe I've lost my time. Maybe I've missed my timing. Maybe God cannot use me or maybe just different stories that comes to mind. Especially when you see young people doing things, I want to encourage you that God doesn't look at age in the sense that God used Moses to deliver. When God called Moses, not about 80 years old, that what was out was when God told him to um called him to go and free the Israelites. So no matter your age, and even if you've served God for so long and you look as if nothing is happening, another thing is sorry I'm preaching, another thing is that God knows what he has called you for. You might not be called to the forefront. So just be faithfully serving God where you are. Don't compare yourself with anybody. It's God necessary. sees you and God, God is faithful, always faithful. Praise God. Yeah, thank you so much. And I pray that Lord will perfect all that concerns you and the work he has committed to you in um in the Middle East in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Sister Iswat. Good morning, Ki. Good morning, everyone. We can hear me. I yes, really want to thank God. Speak more audibly. Yeah. Okay. Be more. Yeah. Okay. I, I wanna I really want to thank God for ordering my steps on on Tuesday. I want to thank God because the path of the light, like he orders our steps essentially. So on Tuesday I had like a session with my PT and my personal trainer in the gym and you know, I was just telling him about this, like snack I tried and you know does he know any way I can buy it in Glasgow and so he told me about this cafe where they sell them and I was like oh I'm definitely going there after the gym so after the gym I think I had one or two okay I had a dental appointment I went for that came back went to return an item in the store and I, was, I started feeling very tired I started having this really intense like neck pain on the left side of my neck and I was like, even afraid like God please don't let me fall down on the street on the road I had to, I thought it was my backpack. So I had to like take my backpack from the back, put it in front. I was like, you know what? Maybe I should forget about this uh, this snack. Let me just go to the library. But I just felt prompted to go. So, you know, I put the backpack in front, you know, started pacing myself little by little praying. I go, should just heal the pain. So I went to the the shop when I saw the snack, all the pain <laughs> went away. I was just so happy to have it. And then after that, I just, I took another route to get to the subway. It's not the same route I, I would take. And, you know, literally like less than 50 feet from the subway, I see this cameraman and this reporter like setting up and then they are approaching these three girls and these girls literally just walk away from the man. They don't even like give him face. And I felt really bad. So it was very rude how they could have just said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. I don't want to speak to you or something. Instead of just ignoring him like that. So I just walked toward him. I made eye contact with him. I walked toward him like, what do you need? And he was like, oh, is he okay if he interviews me? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, sure. And so the cameraman starts rolling. And then he's like, um, you know, uh, so the current uh, Scottish prime minister was ju has just resigned. Now, what, what do I think should be the priority for the new Scottish prime minister? Um, and then I just start going off PI. I don't even know where all of everything came from. I started talking about how all cost of living crisis, they need to start and um, work with economists and Scottish government to formulate policies that will help family, help, you know, singles. And you know, I start talking about how they should tax plastic so that uh, Scotland can contribute to net zero. I've never thought of that before in my life, PI. Yeah. Tax plastic, like of all things, it's like, oh, there's a lot of plastic waste in Glasgow. You know, that way we can use wa reduce waste. Uh, you know, businesses are saving money. The, the government is earning, you know, and, uh, you know, people can use their own plastics from home to, you know, when they want to buy takeout. And I start talking about funding for universities, start talking about how they need to make the city cleaner, that the city is dirty. I just keep going on and on, PI. And I'm like, wait, where is all this coming from? And then he's like, oh, what do I think about Scottish independence? I've not talked about that. I was like, oh, yeah, every country deserves to be independent. Nigeria gained independence in 1960, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, we finished the interview. <laughs> I'm like, oh, where is this going to be aired? And he's like, oh, it's going to be aired on the 630 News on BBC One. I was like, what? Wow. Are you kidding me? I, I was just, I was blown. I was like, whoa, that is so crazy. For me, it's just the timing, P.I. Because I could have walked away. I could have gone to the library. My neck is pinning me. I just felt prompted to go and buy the Kenya and pass the other way. And like, that's how, how I was interviewed and I was on BBC One PA. I just want to thank God. Like I'm still in awe. And I know like, wow. it's not just like interview for interview sake. You know, I'm trusting God. Like some of the things I said, like they would actually take it 
like into mind whoever the new prime prime minister is going to be and you know maybe opportunities will even come from there like i'm so grateful to god for that i also really want to thank god for my my results so i i, I was awarded my mphil degree with very minor corrections and initially when i got the email i was really like concerned like oh god which corrections is this i want to graduate in june and i don't want to keep doing this work again and then yesterday i finally decided to open the corrections at tmp i literally it was like they didn't know what to correct just just change this from this section just adjust it just ad- like i couldn't believe the work and like when i was praying for my results i was like god i know this work is not perfect i can pray for no corrections but i don't want to be a lazy economist i want to be competent in the work that you have committed to my hand so lord let me like i want to have little amendments not major amendments but little amendments and honestly i'm i'm just so blown away that even at the work there was no correction to my results no correction to my methodology and I'm just like, wow. So I just want to bless God for that, honestly, because literally my sweat, my blood, my tears <laughs> went into that work. And I want to thank God for just his faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray that that is how God will orchestrate situations and will walk into divine. Um, God will align us even to things that we cannot um, plan. Um, but another thing that's quite interesting is that do not norm conversations the Holy Spirit is having with you or learnings. You, you, are, you will be amazed how much you're learning, how much God is putting thoughts in your mind. And you have to be very conscious and aware of it because when there's a demand, you'll be amazed what will flow out of you. Amen. I'm Sister Twain. Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to thank God. I was actually reluctant. I didn't want to share because I just felt okay. But when you said it could encourage someone, um, today is my 15th year wedding anniversary. And uh-huh. I look back today, especially, you know, the oh. last few years has been Hello, all ma. I can just say five years of it. Uh, ma, and I said 15. Uh, I don't want to share. Congratulations. Please go ahead. <laughs> so Sorry. I just look back and I just want to say thank you, Jesus, because the last few years has been, you know, a turnaround. It's been the testimony of um the part of the just is just like a shining light that shine a more and more brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. And I just want to encourage someone because at the beginning might be wrong. You might not even understand because at some point, hmm, this is not me, you know, few years ago, like five years, six years ago. But I'm grateful to God because he, he always has us in mind and everything would always work together for our good. So I'm just grateful to God for strength, for the new season you know, for strength to hold on and for the gift of my husband. Wow. God literally opened my eyes. You know, I had a different perspective before and it was so shallow. I'm grateful because I obeyed. And in that obedience, he opened my eyes to see that which I actually have. Maybe I take it for granted, you know, yes, but because of some certain perspective or, or expectations, I'm just grateful to God. So just hang in there. God is working. You might not see it, but when the time comes, you will see what God is doing. And I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for the next 15, 40 other years together in joy, in peace. Yes, in happiness. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Many more glorious years in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Marenike, and finally for this one, I'll take Sister Sharon. Sister Marenike. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I just want to thank God for the grace to be used by him. Let me put it that way. So I remember three years ago, I was going to Oshodi and on my way, going to the bus stop at Bega, and it started raining. So I ran under this roadside umbrella and I sat down and I saw that there were like few men seated drinking this regular alcohol sachet, what are that you probably Yoruba people call Paraga, you know, and they were having conversation and I was just pressing my phone, trying to while away wait time for the rain to go down. And there was this particular man, for whatever reason, just started talking to me. Like I could tell that he just needed someone to talk to. It was very early in the morning. You know, man was smelling of a call and just kept talking and was telling me how his wife left him with the children. At some point, I was really not interested in this because my mind was like, what's my business, you know? Well, I was chatting with my friend, so I was telling my friend. My friend then said, why not preach to this guy so that 
probably maybe that might put him off or something or just preach you don't know what god is doing so reluctantly i started telling him that oh i started asking him questions you know do you believe in god and he was responding and then it was happy that i was giving him attention at some point and was happy to be answering my questions so it's called long story short we exchanged numbers i reluctantly gave him my number and i left when it stopped raining so he kept calling you know auntie everybody you know i will respond but the next morning this man called me and was really crying on the phone you know and was telling me that ah auntie thank you for giving me attention yes they were she or they take borrow me you know pay but my confessor think pay um you know, I've told my son where I will put he my wants, phone. He wants to kill himself for those that don't, yeah. Yeah, like he wants to go and kill himself. That's so he has told his son where he will keep his phone and so this first son that was with him at the time where um, they will find some of these things. And in my mind, I was like, hey, look, you want to go and kill yourself? Okay. She said, yeah, so, so he, already, he already has his thoughts I think he said he was going to go to Todd Milan Bridge. I can't remember, really remember that day, you know. And but he was really crying on the phone. At first, I was scared. <sighs> What's going on? So I tried to calm him down, pacify him. You know, okay, you know what? Where are you? I asked him where he was. He said he was still at home. I said, okay, can you come to my estate? You know, please. That, uh, or regardless of whatever I was going to do, she just at least honor me and see me first. So he came. When he came, when I saw him, his eyes were swollen, you know, he was, he was shaking. I'm like, sure, well, okay, I tried to hold him. He said he has no eating for the past three days. I just tired of the slide, tired of everything. I think it was the year COVID just ended. So he was working with Lagos State Transportation Road Construction. So because of the COVID thing, they were not working. I guess he was a freelance at the time. So there was no salary, there was no money. So it was really, you could tell that. I was really depressed. So I brought him to the house. Even though I was scared at first, you know, like this is a total stranger. So I brought him back to my place. I was trying to calm him down. I boiled, um, I made food. I got him parasamol, you know. And I remember I brought, I because I was really confused. I didn't know what exactly to do. You know, I remember I brought him to the uh, when friends break group at the time. It was a de debate that morning, you know. People were giving advice on what I should do with him. And I remember Uncle Tola called my phone and asked to speak to him. So I gave him the phone. He, he spoke to him. He prayed with him. So I left him in my parlor to just sleep on the couch. So I went to the room, prayed with my younger sister, with myself and my younger sister. We held hands. We prayed with for him. You know? So cut the long story short, he left. So once in a while, I will call him to check up on me, on him. He will call me to to check up on him then i didn't hear from him again on i think two days ago i mean three days ago his thoughts just crossed my mind because at some point his number wasn't going through again so i couldn't reach him i'll just silently say a word of prayer for him that wherever he is i got should just keep holding his hands so when his thoughts came two days ago out of nowhere i just said where is this man so i checked my phone luckily for me i still saw his number and i called and he rang so immediately he rang i introduced myself and he was so happy to hear from me. So, Auntie, ah, I'm see why I've been looking for you. See, so that he said he wants to show, um, I don't know how to say that in English, you know, that he wants to show his appreciation, that uh, he's, he's thankful that God used me that day, you know, that for a while now he has been doing well, that things are now going on well for him, that he has gotten mm -hmm. a job. In fact, he said, Auntie, Muna, Muti, Nimo, Tonsi, you know. <laughs> With so much joy in his voice that he's not driving a car. That so wherever I am, he would really like to meet with me to just appreciate that there was a time he was coming to my estate to look for me because he couldn't remember my house again. That and he was really, really trying to see how he can get through to me. That he's so happy that I called today. You know, after he said all of that, and I took a pause and I was like, wow, you know, this is how God changed people's story. Mm. And I said, kept asking myself, oh, just imagine I had ignored him that day at the bus stop that I wasn't paying attention to him, you know. And the his testimony actually encouraged me to say, Monica, don't give up, you know. This was a man that was really, I could remember how he was really drunk that Saturday morning, I swollen. He had already given up on himself and on life and was ready to end it all, you know, but 
I'm thankful that God was able to stop that and stop him from then committing suicide and today to the glory of God some years after he's doing really really well so that's mm-hmm. that I'd also like to share my own personal story which is something similar to this just to also encourage somebody listening <clears throat> so in my estate I've been part of the ESCO for the past two years and I'm the youngest ESCO and sometimes I'll ask myself when I'm sitting in the midst of these men that are in their 50s in their 60s you know, these are property owners in my estate and I'm just a regular tenant. And I'll ask myself, when how did you get here? You know, and for the past two years, I've been part of the ESCOs. I'm not just a an, a member of the ESCOs that is not relevant, you know. I'm like a go-to person in the estate that, so much so that when I'm walking on the streets of the estate, I'll see people literally pack their car when I say, Monica, thank you for all that you do for River Valley Estate. And, you know, that will sort of encourage me to even want to do more. In fact, on the estate platform, people will just tag me, oh, Marenike, we need, I'm in charge of the estate lights, you know, so whenever our light goes off, oh, I'm Marenike. And one day, even though I was really tired and complaining, and God says, you don't know that you're a light. I think I just, in the uh, power sector, or the light section of the estate, you bring light. So that's your purpose. And that will also encourage me. So, and... I just remember how there was a time I was even in a particular area, more like a ghetto, and I couldn't really pay my rent, you know, and now somebody in this kind of place, sitting with this caliber of people, it can only be God. I don't know how. I, mm. I honestly don't know how I found myself here. How do, I keep Sometimes I ask myself, how did you get here? And Holy Spirit will say, it is me, you know. So whatever people you might be going through, I just want to encourage someone that. God has you. Don't give up. You know, like yesterday, the, the word I said, there's newness. You Things will come alive again. So I just want to use this testimony to encourage somebody. Thank you Amen. for the opportunity. Amen. Hallelujah. To God. And God will continue to bless and please you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Sharon. Oh, Thank you. Morning. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I'll try and make it quick because of time. Um. So um, I had a... a a tax bill that I needed to pay. Um, so the way it works, I mean, in the UK, when the your financial year, year ends, um, you have about like nine months until you you have to pay um, the, the tax or the corporation tax. So at the back of my mind, I knew I had to make uh, the payment you know, in due course. So I kind of set some money aside for that. Um, but when the bill <laughs> eventually came, I, I went into panic mode because I honestly, I wasn't expecting that bill. And like, honestly, God had to just calm me down. That, okay, relax, calm down, send me scriptures and so on and so forth. So anyway, it was fine. But then for some reason, I just felt like there was um, something incorrect in the calculation. So I went back um, to look at some of like the invoices, put them all together, did the calculation. And truly, because when I um, I told the accountant that this figure doesn't seem right, he he they were like, no, it's correct. And But then I went back to go and check um, the invoices and I brought back my own calculation there and they were actually like yeah you're right but what I want to um, um, share really is uh, apart from that um, so there was a reduction there and before um, before I actually calculated what that reduction was um, uh, one time I was with my husband and, my, and he, he basically said to me he could see that there's going to be a reduction so he mentioned the, the, the first amount and then he said he could see something else but I was like, oh, mom, you know, I don't know about that. But in my mind, I knew because I, I'd already calculated, done some calculation. I knew that this second amount, this first amount was going to be reduced. So I was expecting that. And, but he kept saying, are you sure? Like, there's, there's more, there's more. I'm like, I don't know where this more is going to come from to reduce this bill <laughs> any further. But anyway, so I randomly then decided I actually almost was on, on the verge of um, just um, go, going ahead to make it, um, the payment for the bill. But then for some random uh, um, other reason, I decided to um, have a conversation with the accountant. So I was talking to him, talking to him, and he was like, actually, um, we haven't done this thing for you that, oh, send us an email so that we can do this thing. We'll just um, backdate it. And by the time they'd done that, they'd re- further reduced the bill some more. So <laughs> I, that is my testimony, really. It's just that actually my husband did mention that there was going to be an, a further reduction. Um, so, I, you know, I'm just really grateful to God for reducing that bill for me um, and saving me because if I hadn't checked what they had done 
um, I would they I would have ended up having to pay more, which I, honestly at this <laughs> in this moment in this season I need all, all that cash. So I'm really really grateful to God for um, coming through on that. I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, I had an extensive conversation till this early hours of this morning with someone, and um, it's as um burst something that is going to happen by grace of God after when friends break and certain conversations about processes that even believers we need to know and be aware of and i'm just amazed that what you say imagine you don't go and check it sometimes the miracle you're asking god for is in god opening your eyes and us not just being casual about things we need to even know about and the lord will strengthen us in jesus name can we thank god for all the testimonies and like god thank you for always giving us reasons to thank god on this um, in this community, on this platform, Lord, you continue to give us reasons and we return even with testimonies about the nation in the name of Jesus. I want to give us a task in this month of, we're going to be praying for um, President Tinumbu. We're really going to pray for him. You know, not just, but really, really, really going to pray for him in the name of Jesus and, you know, just surround him with, with, with people, um, the right people in the name of Jesus and everybody working in government. But we're going to spend time. I want to encourage you, your free time, pray for him, declare words over him, pray over his mind, pray for courage. Um, President Tinumbu of Nigeria, right? Pray for courage. Um, I want you to pray also your spare time for Mali, for Burkina Faso, for Niger. I begin to pray that Lord God, using them as a point of contact, your will be done in those places in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. We thank God. We'll continue praying at other watches and we're praying for um um we're praying for when friends pray. We're trusting God. Um we're, we're really believing God. By the grace of God, we sh we would be flying <laughs> um Minister David Dam to Manchester for when friends pray Manchester. We're trusting God for all the resources and we know it's provided for in Jesus' name. Um just keep praying for us. And the Lord God will perfect all that He is started to do. Um, yesterday, the Lord laid a stir in our heart, and with the declaration that happened yesterday, I, we just knew. I mean, just amazing story already of what God is set to do. Hallelujah, 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 Father Lord, I just pray you open our eyes. I pray that someone you will not bump into a wall and it, it because it, it looks like a way, but it's not. Lord, you open our eyes. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you all. Have a blessed, blessed day.